Hello folks, both Drew Dolkong here, Arne Brzeet, and Mike is usually taking up my trusty machete in the form of Ebbs and Company once again, but this time around it's against Blue Rattle Druzzy, or Ur Druzzy like I like to call it. Um, again, not the interface which you most like probably, but the interface which makes possible to pilot this crazy apps and company deck which is just miserable to click through all the triggers and combos on magic online and um blue red eldrazi is not something that is gonna cost a kidney to build uh quickly but um still it's a deck that requires a lot of cards that are normally not stocked in modern at the card pools for many people um and um uh, yeah this was right after the Protor, like right like a couple of days after it um uh, only get to it now because i had a bunch of uh matches i recorded that day so now we finally get to blue red and i really hope i get to play test more the matchup against carlos uh in paper because one of my teammates actually built the deck so he's gonna key cast soon this week at our modern local uh, open. Yeah, so I kept that hand. It had a green source, it had a bird, it had a path, which I actually run main deck. I I kind of like it over playing like uh, an abrupt decay. Because in the matchups where you actually like want some main deck removal path is better than decay because okay you can't kill plating but you can kill a creature with plating you can kill nexus you can for one mana get rid of a swift spear from burn you can get rid of a smasher unless they have a chalice on one so overall quite decent hand yeah I kind of knew beforehand how to more or less play against the Carlos build, but not so much um, how to uh, work it out against the Blue Rat. Because they play some tricky cards, like this one for example. Okay, uh, it's before we start the match, he gets to start the game with this. Uh, he gets to uh, discard the card off of that gemstone mine. Um, Oh no, gem gemstone coven. Well, not discard exile. Don't remember whether it has to be a land actually. Perhaps it should be a land. Okay, he exiled an island. Uh, I'm cracking the fetch. I don't know exactly for what then. It's early enough to maybe consider taking a temple garden, but I have another fetch in hand and I have a couple birds which are not like not gonna die so hard against uh blue rat they only have like this member is a main deck removal spell sometimes they actually might wanna dismember my bird just to slow me down enough but if they have a turn to play they would rather do that I think cause um it's not guaranteed that they would slow me down considerably. considerably. Pretty massive start, I and the uh, cavern for turn two. I suppose it's a good draw. Now he gets to play whatever. For a second he forgot that I doesn't tap for mana. And um, the blue red version doesn't actually have a uh, Orberg, so eyes are just there to sit, but because so many people are, are likely gonna play um, the channel friable version, so this deck gets to the benefit of Orberg from the opposing deck. Okay, land number two. Um, the most likely play here is to actually cast things, but. Um, I suppose I just want more mana as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, be and because I drew a third bird, um, 
I shouldn't have cracked the fetch in in, uh, in paper. I wouldn't crack this fetch actually. Though no, actually, no, I would because um, makes much more sense in terms of saving some life to uh, um, to crack this fetch of forest. But oh no no no, actually. Because yeah. I'm not telegraphing path so hard, like, there was no way I, I was tapping out like this and spending money like this if I didn't have a path. So he slams down an obligator, I'm not sure if he should've, because um, sometimes it's better to wait till he gets the trigger. On the other hand, I don't really have any good targets right now, so... Plus it has haste, and I can't really block it profitably, so yeah. He didn't have a third land, now he gets it. Because of my path, but that's okay. Still... Nothing scary going on, because... <clears throat> um, it will be much more scary, I think, if, um, let's say I wouldn't have this path, and then he would slam dunk like a spawner to make the aggregate like 3 5, so that would be kind of scary. Um, even if I wouldn't hit this triple bird's draw, like one or two would already be quite a big deal, I think, because that still would mean like turn 3 company. Actually, now I don't really need all these birds ar around here. Um, I'm not sure why I'm casting its main deck. Uh, main bo uh, yeah. Well, not main deck. Uh, main face. I suppose because if I hit witness, I can uh, play a land. But I don't really need that land, so it's a problem for me. I hit a witness, but um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what I took here, but uh, looking back at it, I think I should have taken an offensive plus here. Let's see what I take. No, I actually take uh, an offensive plus witness, I suppose, for path. Uh, cause going for combo is actually not a bad idea against them, that's for sure. And I have another company, so I have actually a pretty good chance to flip a Phanx off of the second one. So, I'm going the conservative route here. And I'm not sure if that was a good idea. So close to combo. So, um, yeah, bashing in for one with the bird that got a counter off of Bolster thanks to Anafenza. Um, wait, what? Really? Really, I didn't even attack for one there. Hmm. Playing real conservative here. Trying to play a control game against this deck. Well, I guess it's possible with the setup I got, but I don't know what's the what's the point. Okay, he got an Eldrazi Temple, so um, he can actually dump a lot of stuff here if he has. He has three cards in hand. It's not that many, but could be something like a couple of annoying beefs that's for sure he's attacking with this free one now okay that's a mistake because he didn't just he just didn't play with this deck enough I mean come on it's it's like I can trade with the witness I can trade with a bird like what's the what's the point I don't mind losing this witness here for example <clears throat> Yeah, that was just pretty bad attack. And it must mean that his hand is quite garbage if he made that attack.
perhaps like the way I played out my last turn maybe I was just uh, too confused because same day I played against Carlos and they have like quite, quite a bit different configuration uh, and um, Blue Red doesn't have the smashers as I remember and um, maybe not even Fortnite series I'm not sure um, no they should they should but maybe not smashers I know that blue red is very weird as a build not as direct as uh, channel and face to face list so yeah he dumps a bunch of things in here endless one and aggregate which is not actually gigantic here but endless one could be annoying but he, know that, he knows that I have a path in hand he knows that, but I guess he just doesn't have a doesn't have a choice here. Endless is five five, but what else? Um, I suppose there is no reason for me not to use this path at the end of his turn on the on the endless one. <clears throat> okay, so if I would play this uh, game differently, I would definitely attack with the bird for one last turn, and I would actually take. Um, Take Seer plus an offensive because with this, uh, another company, I have a good chance of flipping things and complete the combat, etc. There is also a chance that he would have a dismember, but actually, uh, in this situation, he can't really cast it. I doesn't produce mana by itself unless there is an Orberg or Blood Moon. so the fact that he didn't grab a land from this path probably means that his other card in hand is island but in that case why he didn't want to like just play it and um okay I could, uh, and this, as you see like I drew kitchen things here so company would have been like not even needed here, but the first one should have flipped Seer plus an offense. I was in no danger of dying anytime soon. Don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, I don't need really spells cut here. Well, I, I flipped one, uh, another one. Thin Hunter, remove an aggregate, and um, this is pretty much over. This would have been even like more depressing for him if uh, if I chose a different creature with the first company. Hmm. Yeah, spreading some counters here, and now like yeah. He had actually not the worst drop possible, but not the best diver, that's for sure. I've got to remove this company from the stack. Uh, and uh, I'm I need to apologize for uh, having this uh, cursor on the screen. Hope it's not distracting you that much. I forgot to untick that option in the recorder. Okay, here comes the thought notes here, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but it's I don't think it's gonna save him really. I have a township, so I can just kill him a couple of turns with the birds and, and stuff like this. So not a not a huge deal. On the other hand, this will tap pretty much everything, so next turn I'm attacking maximum for two, unless I draw a land. Uh, but still, I think I'm in the in the great position here. Yeah, this member and an offense is not really like what you want to do. Um, but I suppose I'd better keep an offense around instead of a spell skite. Though I could see an argument for actually um, allowing this to happen because with a counter from Township, Spellskite can block Flood Knots here. In the meantime, I can just bash with the birds. 
and I also like to couple extra damage here and now I'm like laying down the second temple on tap going down to nine so that I can attack with more creatures yeah oopsies Yeah, this program of course is not like the best ever, but it's okay for playtesting with friends. Put two different counters here, but that doesn't matter. Imagine those are like those stone counters. Okay, bashing for four with the birds. I'm not sure, like, how would I block next turn? Or if I would block at all. Um, of course he should attack first. If he can actually attack at all. Because if he attacks, there is a chance that I would just uh, pump my team next turn and attack for littles um, they don't really have that much reach so I think in the dark I should let this attack happen and go to 5 and uh, hope that he didn't draw a creature so that he could have blockers next turn so that my next attack could be little So I'm considering that, but I think what I ultimately did was actually double block here and give him back the aggregate. So really playing conservatively, uh, conservatively this game, while I don't think I had to. Well, this makes sure uh, that I don't die out of known there to some crazy draws, but... Um, looking back at this game I don't think there were many ways uh, I could lose this one he would need um, I don't even know what he would need to draw here he gets back aggregate but it's a 1-5 that's okay okay he gets a spawner so I suppose it's correct that I blocked here he got back to aggregate but that's fine I get rid of the seer and I have this path in hand as well because I run two main so that's the second one previously I used up like the first one twice because of the witness Oh my, now I get to do a lot of like crazy stuff. I can basically path and then witness path. And his deck doesn't actually run that many basics, to be fair. I think there has got to be at least two, so I don't know like why he uh, didn't search up like a second basic last time. I guess he thought like he already had enough mana, so there was no reason for him to do that. It's a path, witness path, this is my impersonation of Bolt's snap bolt. Not really um Oh okay, so that's a misplay, so the counter from Bolster should have gone to the witness actually. So that's a misplay. So let's admit, not the best concentration of me here, but thanks to me commentating on this game, post factum, you get to see uh, or get to know like what should have happened and uh, what actually happened, what not what was not supposed to <laughs> occur. Yeah, like okay the. 
there should be like just two counters on that bird and when we're in witness but he's not drawing life at all extra lands from the paths wouldn't really do much I suppose he didn't spoofer about this because he knew about that basically what killed him in this game was that he couldn't cast like two spells per turn but because his draws were like not super exciting so um, he couldn't done that anyway most of the time okay this is all here just to remind you about like my configuration etc but uh, because this game was kinda weird so we decided to run one more game before sideboarding and then continue with the uh, sideboard yeah because we had a break and um, a friend of mine who took the blue red old drowsy maybe wasn't super ready for that deck it's not the most complicated one but it still has some math to ponder about and the sequences so this is the second game but it's still before sideboard because um, I wasn't super sure about what to set in okay I have a manual combo but it might not ever happen it might not ever happen since he might have a super fast start and uh, I would never get to execute it it's actually kinda tricky what to uh, what to play here turn one so I went with a uh, turn one the service here of a uh, godless ring And he went bananas with a dismember onto it. So it felt too good to draw naturally in the whole combo. So I'm not even that upset that this happened. He's down a card onto something that is not gonna be all that relevant outside of the combo. And um, he took. 4 damage here for that dismember so um scrat up uh, since I sacrificed here in response to dismember so township which I don't really need um because at this point I think I'm scrying to company cord uh, or just straight ahead here for example and I have like a couple more lands in hand so I'm not really n in the need for those uh, Ivogin and a Obligator just smashing for free which is fine that's fine both are at 15 so feels like playing domain zoo against I don't know um, at burn something like this no actually it'll be a bit different in terms of life totals and stuff crack and a fetch uh, this time around for forests I do have a planes in hand so I can cast an offensive, but now it's time to stem the bleed in a little bit and play the wall. And uh, recording against uh, Carlos Eldrazi. I sound almost like saying Carlos, but whatever. Um, I debated that Pride Mage main could be decent idea over a second spell script but on the other hand the matter game is still not just about old Razzy so having a second spell script might be just more secure it's 
especially if you bump into Perinary Infect, even though Quasali can kill Eidolon, which is a nasty card. But having at least a couple of spells, a couple of walls, make sure that you're not dying to three ones, three twos, and two ones, and etc. And in case of the Well of Fruits, two four fours as well. So yeah. Also, one of the reasons why I actually like uh, Jessica or Blue Eye with Wall of Omens in it. So you get to cantrip and you get a wall that can block a bunch of stuff. And sometimes you can block with it and uh, flicker it with restos and so on. Not really surprised at the modern PTQ, the one that happened online, uh, had some blue whites and some Jeskites, uh, Jeskai builds in it, and uh, top eight and a bit more down the stretch. <coughs> so this is a kind of um spot on luckily denial doesn't really work that well here and luckily he doesn't have chalice of the void um, main deck I think there are a couple in the sideboard but no main deck so basically unless blue red hits like ridiculous draws in game one I'm pretty big favorite especially with the, uh, Path's main deck after Cyborg they have a couple of relics as well I think at least one bomb and a cage I think that's the standard um, list so having the Foon plus feeder main deck is not that amazing, but it's just like a insurance. It's just insurance. Also, it's like just playing more combo pieces of everything because Archangel can step in at, uh, <coughs> over Milaro or Hanafenza with things sincere, and there you have the combo. And uh, yeah, if you don't have the combo, Kindle is still pretty decent against all the aggro and tempo builds that are spamming the meta game. Okay, he took some damage of a steam vents, um, cast a four for endless one. That's not a huge thing. Ruination guy is gonna do some work here. Okay, so endless one is actually five four, and uh, obligator is now four one. Reanimation uh, guide is actually my favorite card in limited. For some reason, I just love how it interacts with the scions and stuff. Path on the endless one, because red represents most damage. And I can trade with the other two. He got his islands. Yay, yay for him. Okay, so. It's not Seer. But it's still a good card to draw. Uh, onto this board. He has three cards left in hand, but what else? I can't really imagine what he could save him here. I am like Blura didn't hit like amazing draws here, but they were not the worst possible either. So I don't know. Maybe Absent Company is just so favorite in Eldrazi matchups. Um, I think Blura is probably actually easier. Then Carlos.
because Carlos has like so much a hate main deck as well so and they have smashers our deck doesn't really care so much about uh, obligators and uh, ruination and uh, aggregates so because we have the walls and stuff and uh, so on I should have attacked with the kitchen things, but I um, guess I was just trying to play a bit more safe in case some weird stuff happens. Um, the thing is that they have Archangel in play, so let's say he b does block the things, it trades with one of his guys and then it jumps back and then Archangel triggers, so resets the things, etc. Grows the food. I don't think like I uh, should sit here for too long. Oh yeah, he, they don't run smashers. Damn it. Okay, so they do run smashers. My bad. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Basically, they get all the space just by not running hate cards. Main. Well, it's not a huge deal, like, I can again just block with the, uh, block with the kitchen things and, uh, just, uh, so can 3 damage, I uh, know 2 damage, gain 2 back, so essentially I'm d down 1 life, sort of, not a huge deal, I suppose he just, um, hasn't played against Absent Company all that much, so... But he should have... read the cards a bit more carefully. I guess he got demoralized. That happens. He was perhaps frustrated to a pretty big point here. So, Wilfred doesn't get a reset, it just gets a different counter, but Archangel becomes bigger, things just reset, so he's not losing his Smasher, but he's not really getting anywhere with it. Um, this is not sideboarding, but um, I think there is a chance that you may want to set in from the Eldrazi side some denials. Because um, paths are counterable, chords, company, stuff like that. Even if it, as a first spike, it still it still can ruin the game for Abzan. And then with a smasher online or a big aggregate, it's a hard counter for the instance of sorceries. I'm trying to figure out like how to tap out here. Don't really need to cast this path right here just yet. So, just dumping some creatures into play. The thing is that I actually want this uh, uh, mana to cast a path on his turn. Uh, and, um, I'm a 13, but uh, I have the path for the Smasher, the other two creatures I don't care so much about. Oh, shoot! I actually forgot that the Smasher is actually 6-5, uh, so I should have taken one more damage here. Should have taken one more damage here. Well, that doesn't matter a whole lot here in this uh, game. But um, in some similar games it might matter quite a bit. So, spread in some counters. Having a flying sizable threat actually. Uh, does a lot of work against Il Il this and other builds of Eldrazi, that's for sure. Yeah, it should be actually at 16, because uh, Smasher was 6-5. Uh, Sorry if that wasn't clear um, the first time to me. I actually now think that this game is almost over, he's down to 4, Archangel is lethal next turn, and I have a path that he doesn't really know about, so yeah, there is no way he would deal um, that much damage here. 
With a stubborn denial, maybe he would be able to do some fine book. Uh, that's still main deck, not sideboard game, so he doesn't have access to that. Okay, that might do some stuff. That might do some stuff. Uh, pretty much the most important card in blue red Ultrazi for this matchup, I would say. The one that actually could make a, a huge difference between losing and winning a game. Uh, with the signs he can prevent Archangel from blocking, he can prevent perhaps Kitchen Things from blocking, etc. <clears throat> That's in general, but I do have a path, so now I'm just gonna path a different guy that I planned initially. That's about it, so yeah, if I would have had like main deck or Brab Decay, yeah, I would feel like pretty darn stupid right now so even though there are all those chalices from Carlos but at the end of the day path is still better plus it's much better in a bunch of different other matchups the whole reason for having DK's main was that it hits Exarch or Pestermite and that it hits uh, Amulets those were the two main upsides and now they're gone for quite some time now so even though DK um, is a bit more flexible perhaps in total in general but in the matchups that you're likely to be playing against in the coming weeks path is just better he's tanking how he's gonna attack here but Nothing's actually gonna be amazing for him, so he's just um, tapping the bird here with a sign or at least thinking about it. That's, that's not gonna do much. Yeah, he can tap the wall. Um, kind of force me to jump over the bird, though not exactly. Um. He's going to attack, so I'm just gonna go for a path here, and he scooped it up. Because, yeah, now he won't be able to tip my guy on my turn, and that's about it. Right, now, sideboarding. Finally. Um, decays are decent, voices are decent. Uh, glare is dis decent, although worship is probably much better. Still, the thing I didn't realize about worship is that well, they're still gonna have hard time removing it, and uh, it does a lot of funky stuff. Not just in this matchup, but in, like it comes burn against affinity, uh, against a lot of actually matchups surprisingly, and. Um, this way you don't really have to tap your guy, so you can actually just race and attack with your creatures if uh, they can't profitably block, and then worship is still out there. Cutting a seer, cutting uh, a emilari at least, probably both. Probably cutting off one cord, because it's kind of slow. I'm gonna see a lot of hate post board so Pride Mage in so DK in because uh bring in Glare a couple DK so there is an argument for actually taking out one company as well. Let's see what I end up doing here. My sideboard right now is actually kinda different. Uh don't have the scholars. I ha I have the sync collectors rubber. I like them more right now because Scholar is good against Tron, but Tron is bad right now, and then, uh, okay, you have the Grizzle Hole Brand decks and different other fast combo decks, but at the end of the day, um, Scholar might not save you, it might help you a bit, but not super much. 
um, and um, just that the odds of uh, running into those combo decks are kind of slim though I'm actually in favor of people playing those decks right now in the matter game though um, they're not that consistent so there is a downside to that uh, but the thing is that uh, Sin Collector is so much better against blue decks Schooler does nothing really against blue decks because this normally means uh, red or whatever so it either means bolts or like black removal or black and red removal or just out of blue white some bunch of verdicts and stuff If you're on scholars, then I won't blame you for citing maybe some of the men are trying to experiment uh, citing the men against um, any build of Aldrazi pretty much. Because, yeah, they, they might be actually good, but I'm not citing them in because I have no idea like what to take out. I don't want to dilute the deck so much, but you may experiment a little bit because uh, um, there is a chance they're okay this hand is definitely okay so Pontiff is uh, here because of the Eldra's spawner and stuff like Drowner of Hope so um, yeah and also um, with a Sacrifice Outlet or something like this uh, with, so with this here um, you can wipe away more than just science this is kinda weird I don't think I should have uh, fetched the shock here or forest I should have just played that ah wait 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 um, I confused myself so no bird in my hand so easy fetch for a temple because then thick it into an offensive and then I'm ready for Ponty for path so I'm I'm a bit like heavy with lands well I drew a uh, another land that's normally how it goes you keep four lands you draw just a bunch more there is a spawner but that's okay I can't get rid of them next turn, but um, turn after I can. It is one of the uh, those cards that made me actually um, side in Pontiff. I'm not sure about this noble here. Perhaps an offense that doesn't really do a whole lot here, right? Just yet. And this way I can Pontiff plus path for his next big thing. I'm gonna take three dams here at least, if not more than that. A lot of mana and the smashing pumpkins coming into picture. Well, I guess now I'm happy that I do have this path up. Also, Pontiff doesn't look as exciting now as it looked before. I had to discard the card because of the trigger on the smasher, so to pitch those planes don't need it anymore don't mind discarding spirit lands here still drawing lands yeah not not very exciting not very exciting but um, well it's not that bad yet it's not that bad yet Mm, I suppose it's not that bad to um, cast an offensive first and get a bolster from Pontiff 
and um, killing just a spawner is not great value. He seems maybe slightly flooded as well, though I give him one land that island of the path exile. Okay. Goes to attacks just like this. Okay. I don't mind that. His second main. Aggregates. Okay. And. Uh, second aggregates. Okay, this is starting to look, look a bit scary here. Okay, that was a good draw. Apparently, I either draw no paths or a bunch of paths in a row, and then draw witness for it as well, etc. Uh, yeah, don't have to get rid of the two one. Had a bolster for noble. Well, we're still playing online, and apparently, for magic, no matter what client or software you're using, the shuffler is always doing some weird stuff. It's always doing some weird stuff. Plus, I simply forget often to shuffle a bit more after all the fetches and stuff. Okay, I got a path for one of the aggregates, then if she doesn't have a bunch of stuff to play this turn, then the other aggregate's not gonna do much. But I definitely do need to draw some action here, like a company or a chord at least. Also one more card that I've been actually um, thinking about to include in the sideboard. Um, Revlark. I don't like uh, Baron of this Cup that much, though I've seen it in some sideboards online. Uh, I think like one of the list that uh, was in top 16 I think of that modern PTQ online I uh, had them uh, so I'm thinking between Z Guard and Revlord even though they are not good for a company etc and kind of on the high cost but it feels like I want some help against uh, Blue Dax not this one but all the control don't really like Tron. The last roll. But I could just use up a third voice resurgence. I don't know. It's debatable. Okay, now things get real scary. Now things get really scary. Well, uh, what I could have done here is that with the trigger on, on the stack from the Drowner, path it so he doesn't get to uh, tap any of my blockers here. Whoa, really? Really? Uh, that seems kind of, kind of strange. Okay, he does have a second island in the deck. What's going on? Maybe he had a chance to um, add it to the deck a little bit. 
podcast we had a break between in first and second main board games so he could have tuned the deck a little bit okay uh, I don't know like I'm not sure if this was correct to have an aggregate but uh, I guess I just didn't want to die too quickly yeah but now I'm kinda dead Now I'm kind of dead. I mean, I can't, I can't jump block a drowner, perhaps with a pontiff, and haunt, I suppose, one of my guys to, uh, to maybe wipe away science, but that's just so poor value. I think I should have bathed the drowner with the trigger on the stack. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know what can save me here. By the way, about the Horizon Company versus Razor vs. Thicket, not a huge fan of playing free copies of Canopy. I like at least one, perhaps two, but three seems like over the limit. Obligatory steals in an offense, and yeah, there is pretty much no way out of this game. Even if I jump block a couple of dudes, it's it's just miserable. So yeah, obligator is definitely not that, and uh, it's a haste buddy. At at worst, so I'm not gonna have uh, huge guys. Except for maybe a voice token, which I suppose still gonna be existing because it's just gonna stay in the battlefield if he takes it, so yeah. The dream, I guess, is to take that elemental token with the obligator. I guess he's thinking whether to eat some of the signs to tip my guys, but. Well, I'm at 11, so if he eats them both to tip my guys, uh, let's see, it's aggregate still free, yeah, it's, it's little, it's little, yeah, he just, uh, taps my two blockers and that's it, well, casting endless one just to bump the aggregate, but that's an overkill, so my next up deck is company into... Decay lands, court, so Archangel, Witness, and uh, and the land, so it would be just Witness into a path, most likely. Nothing all that amazing here. But not too bad either. Yeah, wish my dress were like this. A bit earlier instead of just a bunch of lands. So, yeah. I don't know why I'm clicking through all this. But, uh, okay, so the next. Ah, yeah, so, okay, I'm, I'm thinking if. If witness have, uh, have gotten back the uh, company and cast it again, so it would have been pretty good. So if I would basically hit uh, company witness company a bit earlier, I think I would have been in a decent shape, still alive, and would have some blockers for his stuff. 
but as it turned out, I just drew a few too many lands, but that just happens, that's magic, so... It's hard to control that. Most of the time you just can't. Red Cap is actually much better in this blue-red matchup than against Carlos. It can count as a proper removal spell. Then kind of cutting when um, one's cut, but on every hand, um, it actually blocks a lot of stuff. So considering stuff that I should have done in <coughs> in the previous game, which is cut one court, con one company. That's kind of weird. Yeah, <clears throat> that I didn't do that in the first place. I've got voices. I don't get it. Okay. I suppose I got real confused. Even though it was hard to find any more space for voices, but still. I think voices are still pretty good in against Bullet as well. Uh, so starting the next game, my hand is pretty okay. I suppose if one of those lands would be another creature, I would be even more happy. Start off with uh, Thicket into Bird, yeah. Another bird in hand, so next turn I can go like second bird spell Skype, yeah. Looks legit. And uh, then I'm basically one card calling away from uh, going for the combo, so like Spike Feeder, and then let's say he doesn't get a removal, and then turn four, five, like card for Archangel. That's considering he had, he didn't board in stubborn denials. He gets to turn one mimic off of the eye, but I get my glare. It should be worship. It's gotta be worship, I think. Outside of counters, there are very few ways for Old Rezzy to deal with. Uh, uh, glare or um, worship. Um, though they do have like revokers or needles in the sideboard, so if they see glare, then they can just go revok revoker or needle for it because it's an activated ability on the glare itself, so it's not like creatures get that ability. So he didn't attack with a mimic because I followed up with a spell scout into bird. Um now he hits an aggregate. So he could have yeah, even if he would make his guy like 2 5, so it still doesn't matter. Because I believe that's how it's gonna work. Fetching up Forest here. I have black from the tomb in my hand, so. Might as well get more. What am I doing here? Oh, okay, I needed to tap one bird for to cast the glare, right? Um, I'm not sure which one would be better here. I guess, like, glare is better if you draw it, like, at the beginning of the game, because you can tap down blockers. But worship is just insane top deck, I guess. It's just, like, uh, like you can have, like, very few creatures and, um, still die with a glare in the bird so yeah I suppose like worship is just a better top deck if you have at least one creature but um if you 
had some of them wiped away with a wretched bomb or something, or just getting them um, killed with like god shots, dismembers and stuff, then yeah. <clears throat> Let's just say you gotta have at least something, whether it's patriot servants, glare worship, you gotta have at least something. Um, the matchup is already quite good, but um, it doesn't hurt to have a tramp in the matchup. Painters is kind of interesting because you you can cord it, you can um, you can flip it off company, but if you get it into play too late, then it's not gonna matter. If they already dumped a bunch of things into play, then painter is not gonna do much so basically you have to have it like very quickly so it doesn't stop them from casting creatures if they actually have um, a good amount of lands in play so okay so I just need not to die and him not to have his denial uh, I don't think he ported them in. Well, I think he should. So, with the clear, I basically uh, keep him off killing me. And uh, next turn, just court for Archangel, and that's about it. It's funny because I have exacties. Unless I draw a land. Then, if one creature dies, like Spell Skype, because I have. Uh, uh, so I can redirect or dismember away from uh, Spike Theater. Four creatures, that's probably one to attack, but this will never happen. Because I just tap them all down. So let's just say that um, I like Worship more than Glare, but I like Glare more than Painter as a trump card. Yeah, now just like going for it. Um, yeah, no need to cast that Milara. He can't cast a stubborn denial anyway. Um, yeah. Plus, I needed to have exactly so yeah. Should actually shouldn't have cast Milara, because then I would be one short. But yeah, I get an Archangel, get into combo, infinite life, and uh, making my guys gigantic. That includes two fly flyers, so that's about it. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, check out the website, check out the rest of the channel. Follow us and blah 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 and blah blah blah. And um, leave any feedback com in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Good. Bye, folks.